Make some noise, come on. So low on energy, oh my god, this is one of the highlight sessions of day 4. That is the last day of Moon Indigo, everybody. Can we have some energy center left, right, everyone? Come on, make some noise. See, you have to keep your josh high, okay, throughout the session because I won't take much of your time. You know who is coming. One of the most uh, charismatic actors we have in the Bollywood industry. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Amisha Gupta and I'll be your host for this particular segment, The Eloquence. And uh, we are welcoming not an actor, but he is an experience. His movies are superb. We have seen so much versatility in such one actor, you know, when it comes to action packed franchisee like Dhoom. How many of you are Dhoom fans are here? Make some noise. I'll tell you a secret here. Yesterday only, Dhoom franchisee, Dhoom 3 franchisee has completed 10 years. I mean, let's have a round of applause, everybody. So before I introduce the actor, how many of you love his comic roles, comedy films, Dostana? Bol Bachchan, come on, make some noise. And what about the drama? What about that? What about I hope that I'm clear and loud now. Great. And what about the dramatic roles, uh, blockbuster movies like Guru, everyone? Come on, make some noise. Guru fans here. So shall we call him? Yeah. The iconic, the legend. We have with us, everybody, the Abhishek Bachchan. Come on, make some noise. And also, I would like to call on stage our Dean of Student Affairs, Suranayan Dula, sir, to kindly <laughs> welcome, Mr. Bishop Martin, sir. Welcome, sir, to Mood and Digo, IIT Bombay. Namaste. How are you feeling right now? Please tell us a little bit about the experience. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Hello. I'm good. How are you all? You all good? Oh! Let's have a round of applause everywhere. We have our Dean, Surin Mr. Surin and and Abhishek Sir. Uh, also to moderate the session, I would like to call one of the most renowned RJs we have in Bombay. RJ Party, everybody. Come on, make some noise. <laughs> Welcome, ma'am. I'll let the stage to have both of you. Please, sir. Definitely, definitely. All right, students, can we have some noise for Abhishek sir and okay. Shari ma'am? Let's start this session, come on! I thought, I thought IIT Bombay is better than this. I've heard, at least. It's uh, too early in the morning. Too early. <laughs> is it too early for you? Yeah. Oh, come on! But look who's made time for us. So please, let's give it up once again for my absolute favorite, Abhishek Bachchan. <laughs> What a, what a pleasure to be sitting and, you know, talking to you. Firstly, um, does this refresh any college memories for you right now, looking at so many students? Um, I can't really see many of them right now. <laughs> it's a house full? Anybody who truly went to college doesn't really have memories of college, so. Um, but this is wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm so, you know, honored and privileged that you all have thought me worthy to be here. And I'm very, very happy. It's my first time on the campus. And it's beautiful. I'm very envious of all of you. Um, but obviously, college is a wonderful time for any student. Um, sorry to the faculty over here, but not just for the education, but because of the exposure to life and all that it holds for you. You make some great friends. And um, it's always been a very happy memory for me. And uh, I hope that when they all graduate from here and look back on their college life, they look back upon it fondly. How was your college life like and how were you as a student? Were you the the bunking type or were you the, the first bencher type? <laughs> I 
of that pause. <laughs> My, um, I went to university in, in America and um, I wasn't really the bunking type, but I, I would say I was a front bencher. Um, I studied um, performing arts, so I mean I was very into acting and learning about it, so I enjoyed it. But even in school or in college, I was, I was never really a front bencher, but I was never a back bencher either. I'm, I, I'm very intrigued by education. I. Um, the process is something which I've always enjoyed. I don't think I was ever a great student. I would say I was an above average student, but um, I used to love learning. It's something that I really enjoy. Till date, I love reading. Um, I love I love history. I love reading about history. I love learning new things. Um, so the process of learning is something that I've always enjoyed. Um, we're all uh, you know, speaking to a bunch of Gen Zs. Are you guys Gen Zs? Are you? Gen Zs? Yeah, yeah. Millennials who were born uh, after the 80s. 90, 1996, post 1996, uh, before 1996, 1996 but onwards. So, so I'm a millennial. Uh, no. You are before millennial, I think. Ah. So that's exactly. <laughs> no, no, I know my generation. I was born in 1976. They were called Gen X. Gen X, yeah. Yeah. But what is a millennial? Millennial is after that. In so the 80s. 80s, yeah, late 80s. And yes. Gen Z is after 96. 1996 ke baad se, I think 2006 or 7 is Gen Z's. Am I right? 2000 onwards, acha, huh? Okay. So, a bunch of college students are Gen Z's. Alright, okay. So, any, any slangs you've picked up? Any terms? Like, you must have come across this phrase on social media, which is Delulu is the only Solulu. Have you come across this? It's Malayalam. <laughs> no, I've never come. It's I've English. Uh, Delulu is delusion. Uh, Solulu is solution. I'm, I have well, I have a nephew and a niece. Yeah. Uh, my niece is in her mid twenties. My nephew Agastya, who just yeah. uh, did a film, is is twenty one, twenty two. So I'll ask them. Yeah. Or oh, my daughter. I have a twelve year old. So yeah, she perhaps would know. I I hope not. <laughs> Uh, firstly, let me uh, begin. Delulu is the what? Delulu is the only solulu. So being delu <laughs> being delusional is the only solution. That's good advice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Delulu is the only solulu. And I leave with one more word that I've recently picked up is riz. Yeah, like my father taught me that. Oh! It's in the Oxford Dictionary. Yeah. Amazing. He tweeted about it a few days ago. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, so he's now using it for... My, my father is, is the quintessential wannabe teenager. He's 82 years old, but he thinks he's 16 in his head. So he's discovered this word riz, and now he uses it out of context and out of meaning for everything. He just drops the word because he thinks it's cool. Oh my god, I think Big B is the coolest. Oh yeah, he Yeah, is. he is the coolest, I think. talk about your films, of course. I have to begin by congratulating you for Kumar. Well, um, you. What a, have you guys watched the film? Yeah. Yes, what a wonderfully made film. What brilliant performances. Uh, talk to me about that film and your character. Um, how special is that film? And now that you're getting so much love for it. Well, um, Kumar is a film made by my dear, dear friend, R. Balki. Balki and I did a film before this called Pa. And uh, Balki is a dear friend of mine. We did a lot of uh, commercial work together. Um, I used to be the brand ambassador of a telephone company called Idea. And there was a campaign about Sergi, which uh, Balki came up with. So we've been working together for, for several years. And um, he's a dear friend. He told me the idea of Umar, which I thought was very nice. I've been looking to do a, a sports scene. She's fantastic in the film. And she plays um, a specially able uh, cricketer. Um, and um, it's the relationship between her and her coach. And it was a lot of fun to make and uh, very, very proud of the film. Yes. Um, moving on to 10 years of Doom 3. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. 10 years? You know, is it 10 years already? Memories? Um, listen, it's next year's, or yeah, next year's going to be, you know, 20 years of Doom 1. So. Woo! Crazy! It's unbelievable. I was speaking to I was speaking to Uday, um, last night, and, I, and it's hard to believe how time flies. And it feels like yesterday that 
we were doing our rehearsals and prepping for Tomb 1 and to think that Tomb 3 has been 10 years now. So um, wonderful memories making the film to get, you know, the opportunity to work with Amir, which has been a dream of mine and a lot, a lot of fun to do, a great fun franchise and uh, yeah, 10 years just goes by in a flash, so pay attention to what's going on, otherwise, you know, life just flies by. Quite a landmark here for you, I think, because L.O.C. Kargil has been 20 years old. Yes. What a film, L.O.C. Kargil, for one more time. What a film, 20 years of L.O.C. Kargil is here. Uh, I'm sure uh, every film is special, but this one perhaps must have been a little more special. Uh, anytime I get to work with Mr. J.P. Dutt, that's special. You know, he's my mentor. He, he launched me in, in this film world with our first film, Refugee. Then we made L.O.C. Karakil and um, L.O.C. Karakil will always be special because it was our opportunity to to remember and to pay homage to you know the great sons and daughters of the armed forces of our country and um, to be able to tell their story. Um, I had the immense privilege of playing a wonderful character of Captain Vikram Batra uh, from the 13th Jammu and Kashmir Rifles who coined that very famous phrase um, and um, you know, a few years ago, my dear friend Siddharth Marotra did a fantastic version of him in Sher Shah. It was absolutely brilliant. And I think to be able to pay tribute to these wonderful sons of our soil is something that's always very special. But what I, a memory I will always keep uh, from LOC is when we screened the film for the families of the Jawans and to see their reactions. And I remember. Um, one of the families came out and thanked J.P. Saab and said, you know, thank you, although we lost our son to the war, we got to spend four hours with him just now. These are memories which you'll never forget. And that's when you realize that sometimes, you know, your films do transcend just box office figures. It's also what it means to people. So L.O.C. Karkul will always be very, very special and dear to me. Yes. Um, okay, this is a question I want to ask all of you. How many of you watched Archie's? Did you watch Archie's? Yes, uh, and again a film special because obviously Agastya made his debut and uh, can I just say when I was watching him, I saw a glimpse of you in him. Oh, really? Honestly, I did. Uh, I also felt like he looked a bit like you, the mannerisms and I did see you in, in, in him. So, uh, was there any advice that you gave him? Also, maybe this is something that you know these young kids will be able to take away from this. The only thing I told um, Agastya, my nephew, he's my elder sister's son. Um, before starting, he came and said, you know, Mamu, is there anything? And I said, uh, the only advice I want to give you is make all the mistakes you want to make and don't take anybody's advice. Find your own path and that's the best way to learn. So even for them, um, do what your heart tells you to do. Uh, believe in yourself, believe in your abilities and your capabilities. Believe in your dream and don't let anybody take that away from you. You're going to make mistakes, that's life. And um, learn from your mistakes and just do what you have to do. Write your own story. Wow, wow. This is A.B. Okay, another side of uh, your personality, you know, of course, besides being an actor, is how much you are into sports as well. You know, you own and co-own teams. Uh, so what inspired you to venture into sports team ownership? Have you always been a sports lover? Yes, yes, always. Um, since childhood, I, you know, I, I was very sporty as a child. Um, I used to love. I used to play a lot of sports for my school and my college. Um, my favorite sport is actually basketball, and uh, I used to play for my school. And uh, I've always wanted to be associated with it. When I came back, I became an actor. I was also looking at doing something with India and sports, um, but predominantly in a sport which possibly didn't have a, the kind of attention that, say, a cricket has. I think we do a brilliant job with cricket. I'm a huge cricket fan. Um, but there isn't much we can do to help the ecosystem. So I was looking out for sports in which we can maybe contribute. Um, so about 11 years ago, um, the Pro Kabaddi League was being put together and I had the opportunity of, of purchasing a team and working in that and we did that. That was my first foray into sports and, and in management. And um, it's been, you know, the league has been on for 10 years. Kabaddi is the second most watched sport on television after cricket. 
Yeah, it's brilliant. It's and what's more, thank you. And what's it's a matter of great pride because Kabaddi is our sport. You know, um, it's India's sport. It's an indigenous sport. It's um, its origins are over three thousand years old. Its origins are from um, which are very rooted in our mythology and the Mahabharat. I don't know if you all know much about all of this. If you have two minutes, I'll explain it to you. I love saying it. So Kabaddi's history and origin is from the Mahabharat, in which you all heard of the story of Abhimanyu and the Chakravyu. Yeah. So the chakra view is a battle formation of seven circles. Yes. And if you get stuck in the middle of it, there's only one way to get out. And as the legend goes, Abhimanyu, when he was in his mother's womb, fell asleep when the general was teaching him how to come out of it. And later on in life, he got stuck in the chakra view and unfortunately perished. That's where Kabaddi started. That's why you have one raider against seven defenders and all the defenders move in circular motion. So it started with that. It started as a war game. It's got an amazing heritage. It's, like I said, it's India's sport. We love cricket, we love football, we love hockey. They're all British imports. Kabaddi is our game. Coco is our game, you know? And after we launched the Pro Kabaddi League in its first season itself, it became the second most watched sporting event in India after the IPL which nobody expected, but you know, we enjoy a fantastic fan following. The TV viewership is through the roof. And um, it it's, it's feels so nice that you get to give an opportunity to people who don't have the kind of limelight on them, like our cricketers do. And then um, subsequently after Kabaddi, I invested in football. I'm a huge football fan. Um, I have been most of my life. And um, I really wanted to do something with India and football. I remember in um, the 2014 World Cup in, um, in Brazil, um, I was there and um, the then head of um, FIFA, Seth Blatter, you know, I had, a, I had a coffee with him and, and he said something which really upset me. He said, at that point in time, our population was 1.2 billion. He said, 1.2 billion people, you can't put 11 people on a pitch. And that really affected me. And I thought that look at the amount of talent we have in our country, sporting talent. They just need an opportunity and a platform. And that's when I came back and actively started working to look to do something in football. And that's when the opportunity of the ISL came along. And um, I co-owned the team with um, my partner Vita Dani uh, in Chennai, Chennai NFC. Um, it's been we're in the ninth season. We're, we're two-time champions. And um, it's been amazing, yeah. It's great. But it's so wonderful that you are backing, um, you know, these sports. Like how you said, our country cricket ko always celebrate kiya jata hai. Cricketers ko always celebrate kiya jata hai. But I think Kabaddi, uh, you know, and football, uh, it's a sport that's less celebrated. Um, but then, you know, why, when you decided to back these sports, were there any challenges in particular that you faced? Because again, you know, these are sports that are not glamorized. Obviously, I think, you know, when you, whenever you try to do something new in life, there are going to be hundreds of people who tell you not to do it. But like I told you before, believe in your dream. I believed in the sport. I, you know, when we were discussing the Pro Kabaddi League, I, you know, when we were, my, me and my team were doing our research, um, it's, it's very modernized today. It's not what we think that, you know, it's, it's really advanced, it's become fast, it's dynamic. And I actually went to see one of these local tournaments very close in June to my house. And there were 10,000 people watching it. And I said, my God, this is so popular. But because it's not on television and it's not in the media, we don't realize how popular this sport is. And I mean, um, the Pro Kabaddi League is going on right now. Um, if you all get the opportunity, please try and go see a match live. The energy is crazy. So it's just that it was a matter of organizing a professional league that would give just the players and the sport a certain amount of, you know, recognition on a national platform. 
And even with football, I mean, the unbelievably talented footballers that we have in this country, all they need is the facility and the platform to be able to showcase their talent. So it's very rewarding for me, and I think it's wonderful. If you go see it, it's an exciting sport to watch beat cover duo football. Uh, the fan following is growing on year on year, and uh, it's becoming very, very popular. And I'm happy for that. But having said that, we all love cricket. Um, you know, we're still, I think, hurting from the yes, finals. Yes, I was about loss. to ask you, how, yeah. how heartbroken were you? <laughs> Listen, every Indian cricket fan has a belief that we contribute to the success of the Indian national cricket team. During the World Cup, me and my family, there are strict rules. The f after the first match, if you win, whatever you're wearing, wherever you're sitting, whatever you have done that day, you have to do that before every match. And every Indian cricket fan believes that it's our victory or our loss. You know, we take it very personally. So we're all still feeling very, very disappointed. But, you know, the boys tried their best. They had an amazing tournament. It just wasn't their day on that time. And it's okay. Next time. Ugly bar they king your logo. Okay, complete the sentence for me, guys. Do you know this kahavat? Padhoge, likhoge, banoge? Uske baad? But I think we've come a long way from yeah, there. We've, we've dispelled that. It's the opposite <laughs> now. Yes. Um, but, but, you know, what, what, before we go back to films again, is there any advice you would like to give, you know, these, these youngsters out here? Because sports, I think, is a very, very essential part of your, of your being, of growing up. You know, and I think it should also be a part of curriculum. Uh, oh yes, yes, I'd love it if, you know, um, there was a campaign a few years ago which I supported wholeheartedly where you would get marks for sports and I think for me at least, um, sports has been such a great teacher in life, especially in my school life. It teaches you so many life skills, it teaches you teamwork, it teaches you sportsman spirit, it teaches you an attacking spirit, it teaches you a defending spirit, when in life you need to take a step back, when you need to move forward how to work with other team members, how to be part of a dynamic team, um, how to pick yourself up after a loss. There's so many life lessons that sport can teach you. And um, I'd love it if, you know, it can become part of a curriculum and, you know, students actually get marks for it. I think it's, it's, it's a great, uh, great life lesson. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, we're going to go back to your films now. It's going to be a trip down the memory lane. I will tell you the name of your films and you will tell me whatever comes to your mind first, okay? Anything, anything brief, anything that comes to your mind. Alright, are we ready? Are you guys with us here? Okay, let's do this. First one of course... They're, they're all waking up slowly, good, I'm glad. <laughs> we have to begin with Refugee. Um, it's my first film, so there's always going to be a, an emotion of, you know, the first time we do anything, it's always very, very special. Were you nervous? Oh, I was petrified. Huh? Yeah, I was a big wreck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, after this, this film is my guilty pleasure. I am ki diwani hu. I just love watching this film. It is super duper entertaining. It was a lot of fun to make. You know, it has great memories because it was the first time I got to work with my dear dear friend Rithik. Um, you know, Rithik and I have grown up together. Uh, although in school he was slightly senior to me, but we've all we're neighbors. We grew up together. He's a dear, dear friend. We all started together. So it was the first film I got to do with him. Uh, so a lot of fun. And both of you were brave. Yes, both of us were brave. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Bunty or Bubbly? <laughs> yeah, again, you know, great memories working with my dear friend Shad. Um, it was the first release that my father and I had together, so that was always special. The first time, you know, the audience got to see Dad and me together. And obviously, wonderful performances by Rani and uh, one of my all-time favorite songs, Kajrare, was in it, so yeah. Kajrare had the Bachchan family <laughs> yeah. and, and nobody knew that it's, it's going to be, be... Yeah, even we didn't know, so yeah. <laughs> How many Kajrare fans here? That song has to be on the list. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah. And I think Shad has a great, uh, Shad Ali, the director of the film, has a great musical sense. Mm -hmm. And um, good trivia, when, when we actually recorded Kajrare, my father didn't like the song. What? 
He's like, Nini, ye kya gana hai? Aise thodi na ho sakta hai. He liked the the bunty or bunty rap that he did. He's like, Nini, this is cool. And I remember Shahid and I t- telling him that, please trust me. Twenty years down the line, Kajarar is still going to be played in nightclubs, and it still is. It's fantastic. Yes, always on top of my playlist. <laughs> okay, um, Sarkar. Oof, what a film. The first time I actually faced the camera with my father was in Sarkar. We started shooting Sarkar first, then I went off to Banti or Bubbly. And then after completing Banti or Bubbly, which released first, we shot Sarkar. So, I mean, first time you get to work with Mr. Amitabh Bachchan is always going to be special, right, sir? Ooh! You know, but, but I, I've always been curious when you work with him. Um, how do you kind of, is there a switch? On and off, it doesn't mean that this is not my father, this is my co-actor. How do you navigate that? No, it's very difficult with him. It's very difficult actually. You know, you ask any actor, you'll be doing the scene with him and you're in the middle of the scene and suddenly halfway through the scene it hits you that, oh my God, that's Amitabh Bachchan. You know, and then you just forget your lines. So, um, he's got that effect. He's amazing as a co-star actually. He's so supportive, he's so loving. Uh, he's very giving as an actor, so he makes it very comfortable. But he's just such a fantastic guy and this icon that we have, and he has this aura that is very diff- difficult to forget that he is who he is. So that always comes in the way for me. Yes. Um, after this, Das. Yes, Das, yeah. yeah. Um, mad film, mad fun, you know, working with Sanju sir. You know, Anna, Sunil Shetty, we, you know, with love, call him Anna. Zayed, Shilpa, Aisha, great, great fun, great soundtrack. Great songs. Yes, Das Bahane was a Woo! great song, yeah. So a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, again, another favorite, uh, Bluff Master. <laughs> For a fun film. <laughs> yeah, Bluff Master um, is directed by Rohan Sippy. Um, if you all haven't seen it, do see it. It's a pretty cool film. I think the way Rohan captured Mumbai and the spirit of Mumbai, I don't think has been done uh, as well as he did it. Uh, Rohan is is my childhood friend. We were in boarding school together. Um, I acted in his first film, Kuch Na Kaho. Uh, this was our second film together. Again, great soundtrack, great actors, Priyanka, Nana. Um, Ritesh. Yes, Ritesh, Baman, Sanjay Mishra, just great, great fun. Very cool film. And I will never forget B L U to the double F master. <laughs> Do we not want to hear it from him? No. Please. Two lines. Go, go to Spotify and check it out. Just, just the beginning, just the two. See, these two are the mistakes you do when you work with your best friend, and then at night he takes you to a friend's studio. This is what happens. That entire right here, right now track was was just by chance. We didn't even intend to do it. It just so happened. We were out one night and we went to Vishal Shekhar's studio right next to Rohan's house. And um, I remember Sanju sir, Sanjay that was recording a song for a film of his called Zinda. And um, so we were all just there hanging out, chatting and suddenly Vishal said, hey, why don't you um, go in there? And, and it just by chance happened. And I didn't even know that, we, like we were just fooling around. And a month later, Vishal Shekhar came to Rohan and said, hey, we've produced the song, what do you think? And that's how it happened. It was not, in, it was a complete accident. Yeah. What a great accident oh, this was. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Please sing the first two. No, 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 no. B-L-U. I, I yeah. They'll be traumatized for the rest of their lives. Yeah. I'm very oh. bad at all. <laughs> okay. Okay, next one. Kabhi Agada Na Ke, no? Yes. Um, my first film with Shah, so yeah, it's always going to be special. And my first film with Karan, who's like an elder brother to me. Um, it was just, it was a wonderful, wonderful film to do. And like I said, I mean, you get into work with Shah Rukh Khan, what more can you ask for? And Shah Rukh has always been um, family to me. Even from before I became an actor, he's always been so loving, so supportive. He's somebody that I can really go to for advice. And getting to, I mean, although we didn't have that many scenes together as we did later on in a movie we did called Happy New Year, but just to, just to, yeah. <laughs> but um, working with Shah Rukh is always just, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. So a lot of great memories making that film. Yes. And I think your character, I loved your character in the film Kabhi Abhida Na Kena. It's very, very less talked about. But I think your character, like how they say today, was a green flag. Don't you guys agree with me? 
What a great green flag your character was. What is green flag? <laughs> <laughs> Some ululu shululu stuff, right? No, so there's red flag, there is green flag. Huh. Red flag are characters who are, how do I explain, you know, like toxic characters. Uh, but green flag is that, you know, that person you will want to be with. Oh, okay. So you were a green flag. <laughs> okay, now this film that I think had the best of you, which was Guru. Oh, thank you. One of your best performances. Do you guys agree with me? Yes. What a mind-blowing film. Um, I'm sure you have so much to say about this, about Guru. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mani Ratnam, I mean, that's enough, right? It was my second collaboration with Mani. Uh, we did a movie called Yuva before. Uh, Guru was just an amazing opportunity as an actor. Uh, I don't know any actor who would have not agreed to be a part of it. And um, it was just, it was such a fantastic experience and um, great memories. A very difficult character, but a film which is so nice, you know. I feel as actors, we're so lucky if we get that one opportunity to make a difference to somebody's life. It's, you know, it's more, I, I feel today, unfortunately, as, as artists, our focus is more on box office. Yes, that's very important, but at the end of the day, it's also, you know, being an artist is also about making a difference. Are you able to change somebody's life? Are you able to inspire somebody? And the one film which gets referred to a lot in my career is Guru, because it was such an inspirational film. It's, it's a film that people still come up to me and say, hey, you know, I started my own business after, after watching Guru. So I'm, I'm so happy that I get to be a part of such a special film, and I have to thank um, you know, um, Mani Ratnam and Aishwarya for it because they literally held my hand throughout the film and a uh, very, very special film for me. Great songs. I think that most of your films have had great songs. I've been very lucky, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last two films that we have to have to talk about which is Pa, of course. I think, uh, again, um, you know, a landmark film for you. What a beautiful film. Uh, Father-son relationship but also real life father-son. So, yes. uh, very special film again? It is. It's the first film I ever produced. Um, so, I became a producer with the film Pa. And um, I, I, I don't know many father-sons who have played father-son, but in the opposite. Yes. I played my father's father. And um, that's how Balki actually pitched the film to me. He said, I want to make a film where you play Pa's Pa. So, I thought that was unique and um, a very sensitive film. And again, a film I'm very, very proud of. Yes. yes. And the last one, of course, Man Marcia. Again, what a film. Yeah, I mean, um, Man Marzi has been special because... It's five years, no? Five years to the film? Yes. In September, yeah, I mean, yeah. five years, yes. No, five six years. years. Six years? Five years, you're right. Five, 2018. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was my first film with, uh, with Kashyap as a director. I've worked with Anurag as a writer before. Anurag wrote a movie I did with Mani Ratham called Yuva. And um, so it was my first film with him, a, a brilliant, brilliant director. My first time to work with my friends Vicky and Tapsi, which was wonderful, a great soundtrack. And it was a film that I did after I took a small sabbatical from acting. And um, that was my first film that I was, you know, I shot after almost three years of not working. Um, and yeah, I thought it was, a, it, was, it was a nice film. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a beautiful film. Okay, uh, we have a last fun segment for you, which is uh, called the rapid fire. <laughs> this Karan Johar just has to be locked up for introducing this word rapid fire. I, oh God. <laughs> and as Tejo says, it has to be rapid and full of fire. <laughs> okay, guys, are you with us? Yeah, I'm very excited for this. So fun, quick questions. Um, all right, first one. If you could secretly sneak into one person's life, who would it be? Okay, no one, I don't. I'm very happy with my life. <laughs> okay, if you could exchange one thing with a co-star, what would that be and who would that person be? How can you answer this in a rapid fire? If I could exchange one thing with a co-star, you feel your one of your co-stars has that better and you would want to like take away that bit from that co-star. My father's discipline. I think his dedication and discipline to his craft is amazing. It's something I love. Yes. 
He's 81 and he's perhaps, I think, doing so much more than all of us here. All of us. Yes. We actually have a competition of who's going to leave home earlier every day. Wow. You won again today. <laughs> but how does he keep up with it? I mean, it's, it's You know, I, I, I ask myself the same question and I realize that, you know, they come from a generation which were wealth creators. So they're the ones who like moved out of their comfort zone, left their parents' home, their, their native places, went to other places, started, you know, a new life. So they're so used to just waking up every morning and having something to do. And, you know, from both my parents, I learned the importance of having goals in life. You know, to wake up and look forward to doing something. Um, my father, if he's sitting at home for two days, he starts getting restless. You know, he needs something to do. So I think to be mentally stimulated, even at that age, is so important and it keeps you younger. When you have nothing to do, like, I, I remember when uh, my daughter was born, I went up to him and said, okay, now, you know, relax, you have a granddaughter, you play with her, chill, enjoy, you know, I've set up everything, I'll take care of everything. And he said, no, I want to go work. And I realized that for that generation, because they're so used to just working every day, you know, they can't think of a retired life. They don't understand it. Their whole, the motivation is to get up and do something. And it's very important. And I think that drives him. You know, so even uh, at 81, he works 16 to 18 hours a day, six days a week. Yeah. And then he'll come back and then he'll blow up till four in the morning. He's out of control. He just, yeah. Okay. Uh, a movie of yours that now when you look back, you think you could have done it differently? All of them. <laughs> Each and every one. Yeah. I, I, I re-watch all my films very, very often and I make notes um, of what I can do different, how I can, that's my, it's, it's very important guys, and you know, it's a practice I would seriously request you all to do in life whenever you start, always look back on the work that you've done, review it, um, see how you can find ways to maybe improve it, be it a product or whatever you end up doing. I, I, I mean, every week I watch one of my older films, I have um, an entire shelf filled with notebooks where I've made notes of what I can do different. And as an, as an artist, as an actor, I think that's a very good thing because the day that stops and you stop finding fault, I think, you know, your creativity stagnates. The fact that I can find all these flaws in my work means somewhere I'd like to believe I'm evolving and hopefully improving. Um, so it's very important to do that for me. It's a great teacher for me. So I, I don't like any of my work. Wow, that's that's just so <clears throat> sweet of you to say. Also, I don't know many actors who do that. Uh, very a lot of them do. They do? Yeah, yeah, a lot of them do. Wow, yeah. wow. Okay, a moment when you thought uh, everything was stagnant. Where you thought things were not moving in the direction you wanted them. Yeah, 2015. Um, I wasn't happy with the way I was working, so I, I decided to take a break from uh, from acting. I took you know two three years off, reevaluated, recalibrated, and came back. Um, so yeah, that was. You know, I just felt you know when you're just going through the motions, it's not really fun. Um, and I hope none of them in whatever field they choose in life never are just going to be robotic about doing what they do. Um, if my heart isn't in doing what I'm doing, I find it very boring. And then I don't want to do it. Whatever you do, you have to do with complete passion and love. And um, I felt at a point of time in my career that I was just going through the motions. So I didn't want to do that, so I said I need to stop. I, and like I said, I just recalibrated and came back. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to say a word or a phrase and you have to tell me which actor comes to your mind. Okay? So first one. Ethereal beauty. There's only one person. <laughs> and she's back home waiting for me, so yeah. Oh, okay. Yaro ka yaar. Actors? Uh, Ajay Devgan. Oh. Okay. Drama queen? <laughs> Long list. <laughs> They'll all kill me. They'll all kill me. No, no, no. Drama the, queen, no. The biggest drama queen, you know. 
करण Whenever this color, this drop. <laughs> okay, Narad Muni. Sunil Shetty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big. Oh, he loves it. He's a big prankster, and he loves to create trouble everywhere. Big Narad Muni is. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm rethinking my own personality because I share my birthday with him. Oh, you do? You are. He's a big Narad Muni. <laughs> okay, Motor Mount. Preeti Zinta. Oh wow! Yeah, non-stop. वो बंदी नहीं करती। I'm missing her on screen. Yes, me too. Yeah, I hope she comes back. Yeah. Okay. छुपा uh, रुस्तम। <laughs> in, in what department? In any department. हम सब छुपे रुस्तम हैं। We're actors. We don't like to reveal everything. <laughs> okay. And uh, the last one, Eternal Badsha. वो भी घर पे ही है। ऑल माय फेवरेट लोकेशन। इज़ देयर एनी प्लेस यू वांट टू काइंड ऑफ़ रीविजिट ऑफ़ इन इंडिया और अब्रॉड? होम। वी लाइक टू गो होम। नो आवर वर्क टेक्स अस ऑल ओवर द प्लेस। वी लाइक टू टू जॉइन होम। ओके नाउ लाइन वन वर्ड प्लीज। एक्टिंग टू यू इज Can I reply in one word? Okay, and you choose the number of words. Um, Acting to you is. It's my dream. Okay, still is a dream. After so many years. Yeah, yeah. Wow, beautiful. One person from the industry you can call even like say at 3 a.m. My father. Usually uh, him who's calling me at 3 a.m. But anyway. <laughs> okay, a film that you have watched most number of times. And you you keep going back to that film. You love revisiting that film. Amar Akbar Anthony. Oh, you know there is that scene, जहाँ वो blood transfusion वाला scene, you know, हाँ. So uh, there is no logic. Yeah, I mean it, the the scene has defied science. If you guys haven't watched the film, please go and watch Amar Akbar Anthony. So science has been defied in that scene. And the whole yes, I made a career out of that. Yeah. It's all about emotion. So yeah. yeah, I'll give you a fun trivia. Yeah. Uh, my dear friend Rohit Shetty, who's a, you, you all know Rohit, yeah. His mother is the nurse in that scene. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's such a brilliant trivia. Yeah. But how to make something that is not logical yet so believable? That's cinema. That's yeah. cinema. The beauty of cinema is the suspension of disbelief. The beauty of cinema is that the, your your favorite actors and stars and heroes and heroines are doing things that you can only dream of doing. Um, it's about selling a dream. It's an escapist, and, and Indian cinema is, is escapist to the core. You know, you've had a hard day. You go home. You watch a movie where they do fantastical things, um, and you have a great time. And you live vicariously through them. So I think that's one of the functions of cinema. It's not just about showing you real life. And we have those kind of films, and they're wonderful. But I think the greatest part about going to the movies is you go with your friends or your family, you buy your popcorn, your samosa, and your cold drink, you go to a dark hall, and you just have a blast for three hours. And that's what cinema should be. Yes. Wow. One last question that I have for you, Evie, is um, you know I've come across so many people. Um, who obviously have uh, you know admired your work, but I have heard so many people saying Abhishek Bachchan is such an underrated actor. Have you come across this? Um, you know, and yeah, I don't do believe in all of that. No? Yeah, it's all rubbish. Um, nobody's underrated. You get what you deserve, um, and um, it's as simple as that. It's 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 a matter of huge privilege that the audience allows you to do what we do for a living, which is be actors. And it, you know, um, they very seldom decide to love somebody. I'm sure there are millions of actors out there, and a lot of them, I'm sure, are far more talented than than a whole load of us, me included. But when an audience decides to love you and to want to follow your work, it's a huge privilege, and you have to respect that, and you have to work hard every day to to prove that, and. Um, it's not easy, um, 
nobody said it was going to be easy, but you have to believe in yourself, you have to work hard to earn the respect and the love of the audience and to maintain it. But these things as, all these epithets as, you know, underrated and all, I mean, it feels nice, but no, you get, you get what you deserve in life. Amazing. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's an auditorium full of people, so many here would, um, would be dreaming, um, you know, of being actors. Uh, so here, to everybody who's here at Moot Indigo, would you like to leave us with one tip, or with, with, with that one thing that has always worked for you? Because there have been so many ups and downs in your own career as well, you know, there have been comebacks, there have been sabbaticals, uh, there have been pushbacks. What is that one thing that has always kept you going and something that we all can take away from? Like I said earlier, if you have a dream and a belief, believe in that, even if nobody else does, and work so hard to make them believe. Um, I love being an actor, I love making films, I love being part of films. I love what it means to the audience and nobody can shake that belief in me. You're going to make films that do really well, you're going to make films that don't do well. And that's life. Where you have to keep just walking that path. If you have a belief in yourself, in whatever you'll choose to do tomorrow when you'll leave this wonderful you know, institute and, and go out into the big bad world and start making your life, believe in what your dream is and don't allow anybody to shape that belief and work really hard and trust me, it will come true, your dreams will come true and you, if they don't come true, your journey isn't done. So keep, 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 keep working hard. How wonderful it was to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure hearing you, listening to you. And I have had such a such a fun time Thank hearing you. these stories from you. Uh, do we have Q Q&A happening? Sure. Are we taking questions from the audience? Sure. Uh, anybody from Mood Indigo team, guys, can you give me a heads up? Yeah, we can. Let's take yeah. a few if yeah. they have any. Let's, yeah, let's sure. take a few questions. Yeah, I can okay. see some hands. Uh, can we have mics that can be passed around, please? <clears throat> or you can maybe just thoda sa absorb se apna sawal bol sakte yeah, yeah. No one. No, I don't. Sadly, my my my, my nephew does. He tried to, but just so much mini I have. Anime, no, not at all. Sorry. And I've been told that anime bachche nahi dekte sirfa. It's like. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. I just yeah. Even I, don't, I can't. I don't get the time for it. <laughs> okay. Yes, the one next to him. Yes. It's a great question. I think it all starts with infrastructure and facilities and coaching. The talent is there. Um, in life, all of you all will learn. Your talent will take you so far. Your mentor or your coach will take you that extra step. So I think setting up an even better and robust infrastructure, uh, a grassroots program to get children started really young and bring them through a program, which is what we do in the ISL. And um, you know the availability of, of world-class coaching. I think this is what it's doing. We're doing fantastically well. Um, the Indian team right now under the able leadership of an absolute legend, Sunil Chetri, is, is doing very, very well. I wish them all the best. And I really do hope we can qualify for the World Cup. We're working at it. We need people to support them. The more we watch the sport, the more we support football, the more money that comes into the ecosystem, the more money we'll have to be able to increase and improve the infrastructure. Uh, this lady, first row, yes. Thank you. Sorry, I can't hear the, the what? I am intrinsically against this whole division of the Indian film industry. We're a very diverse and an amazing nation with such different languages and different cultures. You drive a hundred kilometers, it's like a different country. I like to look upon the Indian film industry as a whole. 
we make films in different different languages to cater to different audiences, and they all do great work. But we all work for the audience, and the audience is universal. Um, Malayalam film industry has always been at the cutting edge of storytelling, and it is not a new thing. This is something that's been there since the inception. Um, the wonderful industries from you know from Telangana and Andhra Pradesh to Tamil Nadu to, to Karnataka to Kerala um, do wonderful work and there's been amazing collaborations that's happened between um, the Hindi film industry and them and that's been there for ages. They've remade our films, we remake their films. There's an amazing exchange of ideas and of talent and that's always happened. And as long as Indian cinema is progressing and is flourishing, it makes me happy. Uh, we can take the one behind. Yes, yes. Uh, any joke from any movie that you enjoy? Any joke from any? Dude, all my films are jokes, man. If you see them, so. <laughs> <laughs> No, we unfortunately don't get much time to sit together and watch a movie. If one of our films are releasing, we do try and find some time. But, you know, there, there are four different individuals who are all so busy. Um, so just getting quality time to spend together is, is very difficult. So we unfortunately don't get that quality time to sit and watch an entire film together. We have to watch it whenever we have the time. Uh, okay. Yes. Which side? That's it. Hi. I'm also Abhishek. Hi, Abhishek. I'm understanding with me right now. Gee. So, how is the relief to have your other with you at home? I think you're very, very blessed and lucky if you get to spend time with your parents. And um, I've been very lucky that both my parents are healthy, active, and I think it's the greatest blessing. The love that a parent has for their child. Um, is something that cannot be quantified and every day and every second with your parents please cherish it because um, it's something that has no value at all it's just it's invaluable okay the one with the the torch light yes Pardon me? Um, how is it working in the web series? I've, I've done one, which is called Breathe, and um, I enjoyed it a lot. It's a different format altogether from film acting. Um, it's a format which, you know, it's a longer format, so you get that much more time to delve into your character and to, and to do it. I look forward to doing a lot more work on OTT. I, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. As I mentioned about what? Reevaluating your past performances. Right. How do you tackle self doubt? Is that what you're asking? Okay, can I ask what you do? Are you a student or? You're a student, right. When you finish and you go out and you start working, you're going to be the first person who knows whether your work or whatever you choose to do is good or not. You don't really need somebody else telling you. But it's important to be very honest with yourself because only if you're truly honest with yourself are you going to be able to grow in life. If you're going to live in a fool's paradise and think I'm great at everything, you're never going to change, you're never going to evolve, you're never going to improve. So I don't look upon it as self-doubt, I look upon it as self-improvement. Look back at your work, see what you can do better. You don't have to put a negative connotation to it. I look back at my work and I don't, I'm not saying, oh God, I'm such a terrible actor. I'm thinking, how can I improve myself to be a better actor? So that's the way to approach it. The one in green, can come to you. Yeah, and just two, three last questions, we'll wrap up. Can you be a little louder? Did you how, hear? Do I, how do I take one? The, what? The? How do you take out the recent? What, what controversy? What controversy? 
Which controversy, I should say? Huh? I can't hear what he's saying. Can you be louder? Or we move on to the next no, question. No, no. How do I take on what? Recent controversy. Which controversy are you referring to? Huh? You're not audible. Okay, we move on to the next question. The the one in yes, right in the front row, please. मैं अपने पिताजी से हूँ और वो उनके पिताजी से हैं तो इन अराउंड अबाउट वे मैं अपने दादाजी से भी इंस्पायर्ड हूँ। जी देखिए मैंने ये ये तय किया था बहुत साल पहले कि मैं दादाजी की जो कविताएं हैं वो कभी नहीं सुनाऊंगा क्योंकि मैं बड़ा हुआ हूँ मेरे पिताजी जो हैं वो रोज शाम को डिनर के बाद मेरी बहन जो है मेरी बहन और मेरे साथ बैठ के दादाजी की जो कविताएं हमें सुनाते थे और समझाते थे अगर आप दादाजी की कविताएं सुनेंगे या पढ़ेंगे एकदम क्लिष्ट हिंदी में है तो कभी कभार बचपन में हमें समझ में नहीं आती थी कि भैया ये बोल बोलना क्या चाह रहे हैं तो डैड हमें रिसाइड करके समझाते थे और मैंने तब तय किया था कि भैया इनकी तरह जो दादाजी की कविताएं रिसाइड करता है वो मैं कभी नहीं कर पाऊंगा तो मैं उन्हें डिसरिस्पेक्ट नहीं करना चाहूंगा तो मैंने हमेशा ये प्रण लिया था कि अगर कोई दादाजी की कविताएं रिसाइट करेगा वो डैड ही होंगे मैं कभी नहीं करूंगा अच्छा 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 वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड वी गो राइट एट द बैक यस ओ यू वांट कम आ जाओ आ जाओ बात कर लो यस बट जस्ट स्पीक लाउड बिकॉज़ आई कुंट हियर दैट जेंटलमैन देयर या हाय तो आई विल सेक सर जैसा कि हम सभी जानते हैं कि जो मूवीज होती है जो मूवीज दिखाई जाती है वो समाज को सेव करती है सोसाइटी को सेव करती है तो मैं ये जानना चाहता हूँ कि एक्टर के माइंड में या जो भी एक्टर्स परफॉर्म करते हैं जनरली ये माइंड में रहता है वाइल्ड एक्टिंग ऑन द स्क्रीन दैट इट विल इट विल गिव मैसेज इट विल गिव मैसेज टू द सोसाइटी और दोर कई एक्टर ऐसे हैं जो इसके बारे में सोचते हैं मेरा मानना है कि मैं बस वही पिक्चर करता हूं जो जिनमें मैं मानता हूं मैं आप 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 अगर हमारे दर्शक हैं मैं आप ना तो आपका पिता हूं ना तो मैं आपका माता हूं या परिवार हूं दैट्स देयर जॉब टू टीच यू द मॉरल्स एंड वैल्यूज माय जॉब इज टू एंटरटेन यू आई पर्सनली व्हेन आई डू फिल्म्स आई एम नॉट कंफर्टेबल डूइंग फिल्म्स दैट आई वुड नॉट बी कंफर्टेबल वाचिंग विद माय फैमिली दैट्स माय पर्सनल चॉइस बट एज एन आर्टिस्ट आई डोंट थिंक इट्स एन एक्टर्स जॉब टू बी थिंकिंग कि सोसाइटी पे इसका क्या असर होने वाला है we want to make an entertaining film and they do whatever they do as per that if audience doesn't want to see a film like that that's your choice whether you purchase that ticket or not i'm sure there are a lot of actors ki ye sochte hain ki bhaiya ye film ka message kya hai kya main ye message ka ek hissa banna chahta hu um maine hamesha mana hai ki film ek ek aisa medium hai jisse kai sare meanings nikale ja sakte hain you have to do what you believe in doing i believe in entertaining the audience i do films which i feel ki haan ji mujhe lagta hai ki isse mere audience jo hai unko maza aayega so i make those films but every other actor is different thank you sir thank you thank you and that will be that we all there's a white flag over there i said okay there's a white flag i don't know if they're telling me to retire or hi <laughs> Yes. life as a as a pnl sheet and as a excel sheet then you should be doing what you're doing in my opinion do what your heart tells you to do have passion in what you want to do if you are going to weigh the pros and cons don't do that man that's my sincere advice to you do what you love doing so do what your heart tells you to do i want to do now guru in a bol bachan style 
ये कॉमेडी पिक्चर फिल्म है बहुत सीरियस सीरियस हो गया है पिछले पांच साल से अभी We also need comedy, I think. Yeah, yeah. Thoda hasti ki hum isko. We have to learn to laugh for ourselves. Yes. Yes, sir. I think as a parent, um, I I have one child. I have a daughter. Um, my desire for her. is for her to be happy and for her to be healthy that's all i have no other requirement and whatever aradhana my daughter decides to do in life as long as she's happy and she's healthy i'll be very very happy and proud um it's a matter of a lot of pride for us as a family my nephew has become an actor now his first film has just come out it's wonderful i wish him all the best you know god bless him and all the new actors in that film but for me i never my parents never put pressure on me or my sister it was always about do what your heart tells you to do do what you want to do whatever you do be a good human being and um, i would say the same to my daughter thank you that's it thank you oh you want to stop now congratulations on 10 years of doom 340 it's an emotion all together when can we expect doom 4 and do you want to share anything memorable from all the three sets um, of doom doom four i don't know we'll have to ask aditya chopra because he's the producer and he usually comes up with ideas um adi usually just you know things or something and then we make the film so as of right now there there's no talks about doom four um i'd love to be able to do it it's a franchise which is very close to my heart it's a lot of fun but as of right now there's uh, no talk of doom four There's so many things. You remember so many, so many beautiful memories. There's, I mean, three films, you know, um, over the last 18, 19 odd years. There are so many memories associated with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Aji, any, any dialogue from my, any movie. अरे कई सारे हैं. But one that I like a lot is one. Huh? Come in front. Are you? Up there, Ajay. There is one dialogue which I think is very nice from Guru. Uh, Guru has gone to meet Guru Khan. They say goes to meet the Prime Minister, and he says, um, "Come forward." Are you, Bhaiya? Come forward. Aki dialogue better nahi ho jayega. Trust me. So one last question. The the dialogue he says is, "Jab log tumhari khilaaf bolne lage, samajh lo tarak ki kar rahe ho." Thank you. Thank you so much. Question, yes. Where are And we will have to end. Where where is the yes. last question? Yeah, yeah, it's from here right, right in front of you sir. Kaha? Yeah. I'm an artist. Okay. I want to know how do you engage with social media? How much time do you take? I don't bother myself with the amount of time and all that. Social media for me is fun. It's a great way to interact with the audience. But you should take it seriously. You can't live on social media. आज कल लोगों को ज़्यादा मायने दे रहे हैं सोशल मीडिया को, you know, and take it lightheartedly and that's it. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah, Dilulu is the only Sulu. Correct. Dilulu is the only Sulu. <laughs> Thank you. That will be all, guys. I think we're uh, out of time. But please give it up for Abhishek Bachchan. Thank you for being here.